Hi guys, uh, this is a little video rundown of the Unit 5 test prep problems. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, here we go. In the first problem, you're supposed to solve the, these quadratic equations by completing the square. So, as uh, your notes would uh, remind you, uh, the first thing to do is to move the constant over to the other side of the equation. And then, uh, at this same line here, at the same time, I took half of b and squared it, and then added that to both sides. So, um, we moved the constant over, there's the 2, then we added half of 6 squared, which is 9, to both sides. It gives us 11 on the other side. This quadratic trinomial here factors down to x plus 3 squared. Then we just take the square root of both sides, and it's x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 11. And there you go. There's your answer. It's negative 3 plus or minus square root of 11. And you can leave your answer just like that. Um, the other problem works the same way. Uh, the only other extra little wrinkle is that it the the b in this case is an odd number, so half of 9 is 4.5. 4.5 squared is 20.25. So our negative 2 over here from the constant being moved over um, plus 20.25 gives us 18 and a quarter, 18.25. And as always, uh, these trinomials factor out such a way that the number here in the binomial is half of the original b. Okay? So, um, so there's your expression, uh, x plus four and a half squared. Take the square root, uh, bada bada bing, and there you go. There's your answer at negative 4.5 plus or minus the square root of 18.25. All right, um, let's take a look at the parabolas that we're graphing. So this first one here is you've got x minus four times x plus two. That means we have a an x-intercept at positive four and negative two, right? Remember, you set each one of those binomials equal to zero. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, that's how we get negative 2 from this one and positive 4 from that. So there's our two x-intercepts. Um, very easy to figure out the y-intercept by, by replacing x with 0. That would be negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 8. So there's our y-intercept. Um, halfway between these two x-intercepts uh, of negative 2 and positive 4 is positive 1. All right, so that's where our line of symmetry falls. And when you put an x equals 1 into the equation, 1 minus 4, 1 plus 2, multiply those together, you get negative 9. And so there's our vertex at positive 1, negative 9. And then from there, we can just kind of do this over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5. little routine to plot out some points for the parabola, and there you go. Let's do that again. Um, over here, our x-intercepts then are going to be negative 1 and positive 3. This negative sign right here, do not be distracted by it. All it's telling you is that the parabola opens downwards. It does not change the value of the x-intercepts, okay? So negative 1 and positive 3 are our x-intercepts. There we go. Halfway between those, once again, is positive 1. And so our line of symmetry then is going to be at x equals 1. Um, so if I put a 1 in there, 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then here is where the negative sign does play a role because it's negative. So everything is reversed. And so that would be then positive 4. Okay? So that's what, uh, so the negative sign, we don't ignore it entirely, but it does not change where our location of our x-intercepts is. So, uh, and also y-intercept, put a zero in there. One times negative three is negative three, but then the negative makes that negative three a positive three. So there's our uh, y-intercept. Our vertex is right here, and you can plot out the points using that same over one, down one, over one, down three, and over one, down five. Uh, way to locate the points because a is negative 1. Okay, let's do the quadratic formula problems here. Here's the first one. Um, I've put all the numbers in there in our quadratic formula. Remember, the quadratic formula, formula only applies when the quadratic expression is set equal to 0. So I subtracted 10 from both sides first. That's where this 4 comes from. All right, so then it's just a matter of plugging all the numbers in and it's 7 squared, so that's 49, minus 4 times negative 3 times 4, so that's 49 plus all of this, which is 48. 49 and 48 makes 97. So that's our answer right there. And if I was asking for the exact radical 
uh, form of the numbers, this expression all by itself is both solutions. If you're asked to put it into two decimal places like this one says to do, um, then you just get your calculator out and you know just make sure you're doing all the order of operations properly and you've come up with those two values there. The other problem works exactly the same way. Um, and you get this, negative 11 plus or minus the square root of 133, uh, which does not simplify. So that is the simplest exact or radical form of the number. And there's our two decimal equivalents. Okay. All right. Tangent problem here. Or it says, <laughs> he doesn't say it's a tangent problem, but it says a line makes a 60 degree angle with the x-axis and passes through the point 810. All right, so you're supposed to find the equation of this line. Well, remember, the tangent of an angle is the same thing as the slope of the line that makes that angle. So when we have a 60 degree angle here, all you have to do is take the tangent of that, and that is the slope of the line. So um, in other words, the line makes a 60 degree angle um, with the x-axis, uh, so it's something like this. All right, and it goes to this point up here. But this is our angle, and so our slope is rise over run. So the tangent of the angle is the same thing as the slope of the line. All right, so that value is about 1.732. There's our slope. If I put in the coordinates of this point here for y and for x and work out what b is, there's my equation. Okay, so that's pretty simple, really. All right, let's flip it over. We got. Um, pretty laborious problems here to find um, the vertex, all three intercepts if they exist, and the range. And so all these different little techniques that we've practiced in this chapter come to play here. Um, there's our quadratic. Uh, we take b, uh, sorry, excuse me, negative b over 2a, all right, so a is 2, b is 16, so that would be negative 16 over 4, which is negative 4. That's the x-coordinate of the vertex. It's also the, the equation for the line of symmetry. Um, so if I take that x-coordinate of the vertex, plug it back into the equation to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, okay, it's simply a bunch of number crunching we got to deal with, and I come up with negative 4 for x and negative 35 for y. Having the y-value of the vertex also gives you the range of the function. We know this function opens upwards because that number is a 2, so y is greater than negative 35, okay? Uh, to find the x-intercepts, unfortunately, this does not factor. Um, I could find the x-intercepts by completing the square or by quadratic formula. I chose to do quadratic formula. And so I plugged all those numbers into the quadratic formula, came out with this. Um, this isn't that helpful, unfortunately, for finding the x-intercepts. So here you are kind of forced into using a decimal approximation of these two numbers here. And those work out to be 0.183 and negative 8.183. All right, so that's our x-intercepts. Uh, and then uh, the easy, I saved the easiest for the last. The y-intercept is negative 3, so that was easy. I did the same thing over here for this other problem. Um, worked it out exactly the same way. Negative b over 2a gives me the x-coordinate of the vertex. Plugging it back in gives me the y-coordinate of the vertex. Once again, this parabola is positively oriented, so it opens upwards. And so the range is y is greater than this y value of the vertex. Find the x-intercepts the same way as the other problem, and the y-intercept is the same way as the other problem. So there you go. Okay, number six. Um, here's our, uh, our triangle here, and this one had even less information than the ones before. You had to use your, uh, your knowledge about finding um, the opposite side of a triangle using the tangent of an angle. So the tangent of this angle is this over 12. I called it h here for a second, but works out to be pretty darn close to 3.5. And 12, 3.5, and 12.5 is a Pythagorean triple. So I know that those are the values um, for this triangle. Um, and so then I can take uh, some, uh, use some ratios of corresponding sides. Um, I chose to use, although there's plenty of different ways to do this, what I did was 6.2 over A, all right? So this vertical side over the hypotenuse is equal to 3.5 over 12.5. So, uh, and I actually uh, put a 12 by mistake in it first and I got the wrong number first time. So just be careful. Um, it's easy to make silly mistakes like that. But anyway, using solving that little proportion right there gave me A equals 22.14. 
All right, well then that made B pretty easy to find just by subtracting 12 and a half from that. Um, so I got uh, 9.64 for the length of B. And then what I did to find C was I used another proportion here, 12.5 uh, over 9.64. In other words, that would be this over this equals 12 over C. So this over this equals that over that. And that's the proportion that I used to find C, which is about 9.25. Okay, finally, the uh, sock and shirt matching problem here. Um, so the, the, uh, the first probability you're trying to calculate is whether either one of uh, the gentlemen's uh, socks match their shirt. And so there's a 18% chance of Mr. Steeren's matching and 44% uh, percent chance of Mr. Bradley's matching. So you would add those together, but then you would subtract the overlap, that is the, the probability that they are both matching, which is this number right here. Here's a little uh, uh, area model for diagramming these probabilities here. Mr. Steering here, 18% matching, 82% not matching. Mr. Bradley over here on this side, 44% matching, 56% not matching. And so by multiplying these probabilities, we get these values inside here. So the first probability that you're calculating is all of these plus all of those, but you can see in that case we've added this number twice. So I just subtracted it. You could get the same exact value by just adding this plus this plus this, and that'll give you that same number, about 54.08%. The other two are fairly straightforward. Uh, probability that Mr. Steering matches, but Mr. Bradley does not, so that would be matching for him and not matching for him, and that's this value right here, 10.08%. And the probability that they both match is this corner, uh, sorry, this value right here, 7.92%. Um, okay, thanks very much. Hope that was helpful.